And your future self will thank you. Promise that. Your future self will thank you for just doing it and just taking the leap. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jamie Martin Co. For those who don't know me, I'm just a day named Jamie. First and foremost, just want to welcome everyone who's new to my channel and thank you for tuning in. Haven't been on YouTube for a brick. Uh, not going to lie, it's been a while, but really excited to kick it back off in 2022 and to start off the new year with some great new content. I just recently got a new job moving to a new city. I'm actually based in Chicago, Illinois right now. And as you can tell by the title, the job that I've gotten is in tech. So I really wanted to create this video for those who are interested in going into tech or pivoting into tech and may not have had any experience at all with coding. I, I don't code, I'm not a coder myself. I, do I look like a coder? Maybe, but I've never coded in my life. And so I really wanted to create this video as more of a transparency video to kind of give folks hope that, you know, you, you can get into tech and you can get into the tech industry. Today's video is just going to be super simple, super chill. It's just going to be a candid talk, kind of like a candid coffee chat. So really excited to be here today to, you know, share my journey and share my story with you all. All right. So for folks who are new to my channel, may not be familiar with me. I am a recent graduate from college. I recently graduated from the University of Maryland around 2020, right when COVID had hit. Um, I've had about two plus years of professional work experience working in the real world. And most of my work experience has nothing to do with tech. I pretty much have been working in the consumer package industry for most of my professional experience working in supply chain, procurement analysis, business analysis work, um, et cetera. So a lot of the jobs or a lot of the roles I've been in has primarily not been traditional coding roles. And everything that I've done has pretty much been through analysis, a lot of project management, project leadership, and all of those good stuff. There are a lot of great reasons again to tech today, you know, a lot of benefits as, as you know, COVID has impacted a lot of what we are experiencing now in the world. And tech has provided this really great opportunity in the industry, um, ranging from benefits of working from home, a lot of great packages in equity, uh, really high salary ranges. And a lot of people are trying to move into tech and, and pivot into tech, but they don't really know where to start, right? Especially if you're like me, I, I graduated college with a degree in marketing and supply chain management. So going to tech is something that sounds very daunting, right? And there are a lot of people who are in a lot of similar shoes. Maybe you majored in anthropology or maybe you majored in psychology or marketing as well. Uh, that doesn't mean you can't get into tech, right? It just, it's all about being optimistic and being very strategic with where you're best fitted and where your best value is uh, placed in into that type of role, company, or um, moving into that tech industry, right? So I mentioned a lot of different uh, benefits of why the tech industry is you know, so sexy, why a lot of people are very interested. There's a lot of positive perks to it, but of course, you know, that's just like a fantasy, right? You gotta also look into the reality of things. It's still a job, it's still a career, and it's a huge life investment to make. And with any type of investment that you're going to make, there's going to be risks involved, right? So a lot of risk mitigation or risk management is very um, integral into this process and something that you have to essentially take into account before you even make the pivot. So when it comes to considering this type of um, major life event, the first tip that I always like to say is know your why. You know, why do you want to pivot into tech, right? For me, I knew my why and I've always known my why and it's a lot of different aspects, right? One, I wanted to learn. Learning is something that I, I've always seen myself as a student of life. I love learning, right? And whenever it comes to moving into a new role, whether that's a promotion, whether that's a pivot to a new industry or a new job, I want to ensure that I'm learning, right? And I want to ensure that I have an opportunity to learn and grow and do all these things. So for me, learning a new skill set, um, embracing the ambiguity, right? And, and taking that risk was something that excited me. And so if you're someone that is risk adverse or maybe learning for you is something that you're maybe not comfortable with, you have to take into account the limitations of how far you're willing to, to push those boundaries and where you're willing to um, take that opportunity cost into consideration. 
So that leads us into the second tip and that's knowing your advantage, right? And leveraging your subject matter expertise. So I really want to open up the second tip with advice that I got from one of the inspirational YouTubers that I watch on a daily basis and that's Ali Amdal. Ali had actually noted this very simple formula that I actually took into account when I was taking into consideration a pivot into a new industry. So looking to my notes now, the success for formula equals work times luck times unfair advantage. And so when you think about considering, you know, looking for a job, applying for a new job, or taking this kind of leap of faith, there is a uh, level or measurement of um, luck, but also, you know, the work that you put in and leveraging your unfair advantage. So for me, a very good example of my unfair advantage when I was pivoting into tech was leveraging my subject matter expertise. So I've as I mentioned before, I have about two plus years of experience with working within the consumer packaged goods industry. I also have professional experience managing a lot of different roles during my time in university and all of those work experiences as well as projects that I've done in the past and learnings that I've accrued through all of my time from school and outside of school, it all are unfair advantages that I leveraged and exploited during my interview, right? Because you always want to show the value you can add to a company, especially a tech company, um, and knowing essentially who are the clients that they serve, right? So when you go to apply to a tech company and you're applying for a role that is not traditional coding, you're likely going to be applying for roles that are likely within business development, sales, human resources, um, product marketing or product management. A lot of these uh, non-traditional coding roles are going to be client facing, right? So you got to take into account, okay, these tech companies are going to be working with external facing um, stakeholders and a lot of these stakeholders are going to have different industry knowledge. Right? Not only are you going to be taking into account that you're going to be entering a very unfamiliar, very new industry in technology and information, but you're also going to be servicing clients from all varieties of industries, right? And so really a way for folks who are trying to pivot into the tech space, if you come from a background or an industry like let's say consumer packaged goods, or let's say educational services, or let's say government, right? Politics, uh, commercialization, right? What so have you? Finance, you leverage that, right? That's your unfair advantage. That is, you know, the luck, right? The faith that you have in yourself and putting yourself out there, the work that you're doing to apply yourself to these jobs and, you know, get into um, putting your foot into the door and then leveraging your unfair advantage, which is the the years of experience that you're bringing to this tech company, right? That um, that that subject matter expertise that you know about the industry that they may not know, right? That you can add value to the client. Another very, very important tip, and you've probably seen these in so many different videos, is to leverage your network. I cannot stress this enough. Networking is possible. You can take anything away from this video. It's leverage your network, right? There is so much power in who you know. And the reason for that, right? And a lot of people may be wondering, why is it who you know, right? What what about my qualifications make me, you know, less deserving of someone who may, you know, um, be in a better position, right? And it's all about trust. We as human beings are more likely to want to work with someone or give an opportunity to someone when we can trust them, right? Especially when it comes to the job market and especially when it comes to an industry like tech, you're dealing with a lot of high stakes, you know, uh, critical business <laughs> needs. Um, and, and it's a lot of communicating with different people, right? And so trust is a huge, huge aspect when it comes to the entire job application process and landing the type of role. And so if you're just cold applying to a bunch of different opportunities, which was great, right? Quantity over quality, right? You wanna put yourself out there and cast a wide net, but if you're seeing something unsuccessful and you're seeing, you know, no gains in this process, you have to essentially, you know, build trust, right? And, and likely that's the factor that you're missing there is you're not building trust, right? And there are a lot of ways to build trust um, and build this type of system for yourself, especially when you're in the job market and when it's, you know, against a lot of competition. I like to think of this situation as kind of, you know, there, there's this TikTok that I'm referring to. It's kind of, you know, you have to break the loop or the pattern's not going to essentially um, 
break, right? Like you have to break the loop, right? Because if you keep doing the same thing over and over again, uh, you're going to have the same result, right? So you have to do something differently. And so what I did to be successful in creating trust for total strangers who may not know me, right, is building credibility. So investing in my LinkedIn account and LinkedIn page was a huge way of building my professional persona and allowing folks who may not know me to find my profile and then establish some sort of rapport on my professional work experience, right? I've had folks within my team provide recommendations for me, endorse me. Um, I have a high level overview of my history on there and I have a picture of myself, right? And just a back, some background of who I am and, and, and you, know, you know, I'm a real person, right? Think about it like dating. When you go and date someone through, you know, an, an online app like Hinge or something like that, you wanna have some sort of background about that person and, and a profile about them because one, you don't wanna be catfished, right? You're investing a lot of time and energy into meeting this person. And two, you wanna ensure that you feel safe, right? And there's some level of trust or, or boundaries that can be there when, when you meet this person. And so a LinkedIn profile is kind of like that, right? you're creating some sort of um, rapport will ensure you know companies who are looking to fill in those uh, positions, whether that's a tech company or another industry, um, they feel safe around you, right? So definitely number one is to ensure your LinkedIn profile is up to date and try and, you know, maybe, and a good tip to, that I like to do is sometimes I endorse my friends or endorse professional colleagues first. That actually leads them to endorse me back. So you kind of do an endorse for endorse, right? Or you leave a recommendation for your professional colleagues and then you can ask for one in return. That's another good way to kind of get that ball rolling. A second way is to also leverage your network, right? So. If there are target companies or target tech companies that you want to work in, more likely than not, you probably have a friend or colleague that works at that company. So really go out of your way to connect with them and maybe ask for a referral, right? Or maybe ask for an informational interview. If you don't have someone, that's totally fine. Uh, one way is to, again, leverage your LinkedIn profile and you can try and connect with folks who you have similar connections with, right? So maybe you attended a similar university, so you can go into the search and tab, maybe search in X company and search in your, your school and alum school and you can see who in your alum, right, you have similar networks in and kind of connect with them and say, hey, you know, my name is Jamie. I attended X university. I see that you are working for X company. I'm very interested in this specific type of role and would love to connect one-on-one -on -one to learn a little bit more about your journey with the company. Would you be open to a coffee chat, coffee on me? Right, you may get some ghosting you may get some no's right or maybe some people may not but or the, the better opportunity is you may get that connection not only have you started to begin the process of building trust with an, an existing employee within that tech company now you can actually start to learn more about the company right get insider you know knowledge so that when you go into the recruiting application process or what have you not you have a better advantage now so definitely leverage your networking building that trust is so important i cannot stress that enough and finally all i want to say is you know the last tip is to just apply just Put yourself out there and start applying. Closed mouths don't get fed, right? <laughs> uh, word to Cardi B, she mentioned it in a quote, and it's all about just your mindset, right? Being open to the possible opportunities out there. So you wanna make sure that you are continuing to apply yourself, right? Continuing to pressure test yourself in the market, allowing yourself to have a bunch of different opportunities because you don't wanna settle, right, for just one opportunity. You wanna ensure that all your eggs are now in one basket and that you're diversifying your, uh, your cards on the table, right? You wanna have as many cards on the table that you can uh, when making a very huge, you know, major life event choice, such as moving or getting into a, a job in tech, right? And so options are always good. It is a business decision at the day. So never feel bad about this process. This is a business decision. You are providing a service, right? You are providing knowledge, um, performance results that are going to increase, you know, X revenue, decrease, you know, um, X percentage of waste, what have you not, right? And that is something that's of value, right? So you wanna ensure that you are not settling and that you're giving yourself the options that make the most sense for you and that you're making the best choice as possible because the grass is not always greener, right? On the outside, when you make a jump, 
or into a new role, the grass is not always greener. So you want to make sure that that grass is trimmed as much as possible, that the garden looks good before you enter it, uh, because that is going to be very, very important um, in your job satisfaction and how in, 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 in the investment that you're making to yourself to, to move into that sort of space. You will likely never be ready, right? I don't think there's ever a time where I felt ready when I was jumping into a new role, whether that was a promotion within my company or pivoting to tech right into a new industry. I never felt 100% ready and that's okay. So really learning to embrace the ambiguity of a decision like this and being courageous and having faith in yourself and having confidence in your ability is going to be critical into being successful in this type of transition. So just know, you know, you may not feel ready. That's fine. I didn't feel ready. A lot of people in the professional world never feel ready while making this jump, but that's the point, right? Growth is all about being uncomfortable and accepting that discomfort so that you can grow and become a better you than you were the day before. So you may not feel ready and that's the point. So just apply, right? And, and just do it and, you know, enjoy the process and journey along the way and your future self will thank you. Promise that your future self will thank you for just doing it and just taking the leap. Thank you so much everyone for joining in on this video. Um, hopefully it wasn't too long and hopefully you found some value in some of the tips that I have shared with you all. Uh, best of luck to everybody who is out on this journey, trying to get into tech or just trying to maybe go into a new job or industry. Maybe it's not tech. Maybe you just want to get into a new role within your company or your industry and that's fine. And hopefully these tips came of value to you. I'd love to hear your story. So please feel free to share your stories, share additional advice in the comments below. I'd love to hear and engage with you all. And I'm sure folks who are watching the video would love to hear your stories as well. So please, please, please share in the comments below. Uh, if you found this video to be of value, please give it a like and thumbs up. And if you want to see some more content like this, please, you know, subscribe to my channel and please leave a comment below as well on what types of other videos you'd like to see. I'd love to, you know, create more videos that add value to you and your life and, and all those things. So just remember again, this video, take it with a grain of salt. I'm just a day named Jamie. <laughs> just here experiencing the roller coasters of life, just like you and just like anybody else. But I know hopefully we're all gonna ride that roller coaster up together and get into the places of life that we you know, deserve to be in. Uh, but thank you so much everyone for your time today. And you know, hope you all have a great day. So peace out.